Hi, welcome to My Lady's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is a tasty batch of corned beef pastries. Now this recipe today is one that I put together based on a viewer's message that was sent to me a little while back saying that they like their corned beef in pastries. I don't know what that recipe is but we got a recipe out there for corned beef ash and this is going to be a spin on corned beef ash and pastries and I'm going to explain a little bit more about this recipe and thank our viewer for making that comment. If this interests you, stick around and let's get started. simple ingredients in this recipe here today are corned beef ash like I was saying we got that recipe up there but I'm gonna make it here again today to show you with these pastries it's just a small to medium onion chopped in small pieces four potatoes a can of corned beef uh, uh, corned beef that you can get Will Rayma calls a bully beef um, and you could use anywhere from a half a can to a full can in this recipe depending on you and I'm going to explain the rest uh, the rest of the ingredients as we go but peel and uh, get these potatoes in some hot water with half a teaspoon full of salt and get boiling now I'm not going to be peeling those potatoes there I got some done here in advance and already boiled I'm just going to strain it and then uh, we'll start with the recipe and I got some corned beef already chopped up that, uh, that we already got from one of these tasty corned beef uh, cans I'm going to drain my potato into, into the sink and then you can keep the water if you want to, to use it for another recipe but it's just potato starch so it's not necessary so after you've got your potatoes peeled and your corned beef opened and chopped put it all together and start mashing it and I'm going to do that so pretty much all we're going to do here is mash up these potatoes and toss in the corned beef and chopped in little pieces and like I said, you could use anywhere from a half, a half a can to a full can of the corned beef. So while it's hot, those potatoes, mash, mash them up with the corned beef. And then what we're going to do next, before we get carried away with these two, is go to the stove top and fry up that medium chopped onion to get it sauteed. So we're going to use about a tablespoonful of olive oil and a tablespoonful of butter or margarine you can put in there we're not going to be using any salt in this recipe because corned beef is salty and we already added half a teaspoonful of sea salt in with the potatoes while they were boiling so now let that melt down and we'll start putting those onions in there so after your butter and your oil is starting to heat up toss in there your one chopped medium onion or you could put a large onion whatever um, you enjoy using and a half a teaspoonful of savory and you can also use summer savory um, if you can get it and this is like the savory dried savory you can use uh, the ground savory too if you can't get the dried and a half a teaspoonful of uh, black pepper or white pepper and just let that cook down until it's um, just lightly cooked there fried sauteed and then we'll take it off and use it in our mixture that's all you need to do so our onions is fried I'm going to show you what that looks like um, and uh, and we'll put it in with our mixture so that's all you need to do there is just fry it got a little golden brown there and it's softened so you're going to toss all of that in with your mixture the same as you would to make your corned beef ash I will share that link with you as well because uh, here in Newfoundland and Labrador we love corned beef and we got corned beef cakes corned beef ash so good so just mash it all in there. What's that? As I, as I would say, bully beef cakes. Bully beef cakes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mash it on in, I know, Raymond, eh? Yeah. And that's all you need to do with that. So pretty much 
that part of our recipe is done. Like I was saying, our viewer that left a message on, I think it was on the corned beef ash recipe, um, said that they enjoyed you uh, making this and having it um, with pastry. So like I said, I don't know what that recipe is. It sounds amazing. I know my mom would love making all different things with corned beef years ago. I'm going to pass this to Raymond because this is just corned beef hash there now <laughs> and he's just <laughs> he's just you chattering want, over there. Yeah, you just want me to sample this so that... Uh... I know that he's going to love it because he can just put that now on a piece of bread. I could easily drop the spoon, delicious. Could you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Raymond. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're going to make the pastry now and these pastries are quite simple and they're going to be done in your muffin tin so let's get to that so this is just our simple pastry that we're going to make here now and that's two cups of all-purpose white flour i'm using and a half a teaspoonful of sea salt or table salt i like using sea salt here pretty much in all of my recipes we got a half a cup of cubed cold butter you could use as well the the hard margarine that you can get in your stores. Just put that in there. Now I'm going to use my pastry cutter just to, to blend it all together. So pretty much that's all you need to do there. Now with your hand or with your clean hands or with a fork, whichever you want to do. You can do this as well with a blender. Um, one of the, with your mixer with the hook. I'm just doing it by hand there today. This is just a quick pastry. You're going to blend in a half a cup of that cold water. And then this is when I'll use the fork here until I get it to come together and then I'll use my hand to form it into a ball. So after you got the water incorporated into the the pastry mix then you're going to use your hand to bring it together into a ball and then I'm going to put it out onto my countertop to roll it out so we could cut out about four inch um, round pieces to fit into those muffin pans so you, these are mix 12 and if you need to get a bigger if you got a bigger pan um, and you got to make bigger sizes of the cutouts then they'll make less of course and that's all you need to do there okay, so now you're just going to take the dough and put it onto your countertop continue forming it you don't want to over over knead it um, and if you want to put it back into you want to put it in the fridge to cool a little bit let that butter harden again you can but if it feels still a little cool from the butter and the water just continue doing the work so now we're going to roll it out so i'm going to be using my rolling pin but if you don't have a rolling pin you could use a bottle any type of a bottle a wine bottle or a pop bottle and i'm going to be using this top belong to my mason jars for my cutout. So this one is almost four inches across and uh, that one is going to be um, the size that I need to put in for those muffins. Uh, the pastries I should say but to put in the muffin tin and uh, that'll be perfect for this recipe. So just roll it out the same as you would for your pies. So now if you don't want to roll it all in one big piece like this, you can do it in two separate pieces if it's easier for you. But roll it out about this, you know, just thin enough where it's the same as you would for your, your pies. And you're going to take your cutout and cut out 12 pieces like this and fit into an oiled muffin pan and then push down. Do this and then if you run out of run out of dough or pay uh, yeah the dough uh, just uh, roll it up again by your hand and then roll it out and then cut it cut it again in these pieces but I think this might be perfect and we also gonna cut out 
little pieces for the top. This don't really need to have a top on these pastries, but I'm going to show you what I mean by that when we get to it. So that's my 12th pastry cup. So then these little center pieces there, you see like this, just cut them out because um, we're going to use this for garnishing the top just to fancy that up just a little show you that and I'm going to grab for a spoon and spoon this into our muffin so pan. What we're going to do now is take up about a tablespoonful of the corned beef ash mixture and put into each one of these cups. Now you may have some of the corned beef ash left over in the bowl. That, that won't be a problem. <laughs> I can take care of that, I'm sure. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you got a Raymond in your family, which I'm sure everybody has got a Raymond in their family, that is going to be able to clean out that corned beef ash, no problem. And you're going to find too, having the, the onion already cooked, you're not going to have that crunch in here um, of an uncooked um, onion, which I like uncooked onions anyway, but you know, they have the texture pretty much all the same. And you're just scooping it in there. And what I'm saying about those fancy tops, you can just put it over the top like this. It doesn't matter what shape it is. Um, you can fair it off if you want to. Just have a little, little top on it, that's all. Or you can fancy it up whatever way you want it. If you wanted a, a special star or a heart or whatever, form it out and put it there. But you know I'm not about fancy. I'm about cooking homemade meals. That's affordable, tasty, and sometimes from leftover meals. And I hope you're excited about this one. So we're going to be putting these in a preheated. 350 degree oven Fahrenheit and we're going to be baking it anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes only until you see that your pastry is starting to get a, a light golden brown a light brown light go or a little bit darker if you want to and because uh, the inside is already cooked we don't need to cook that we're just doing the pastries now when mine is done and Raymond <laughs> gets into this corned beef ash over here. He might even fry this up again. And, uh, I think the best part between of his being behind the camera is when the camera stops for a second, I get to clean out the bowls. <laughs> you do. You do. And as you know, he likes behind that camera. I know you want him in front here, but he gets to pick while he's behind. He don't get to pick while he's on this side. Anyway, we'll meet you back here when these are baked. I'm going to show you what they look like. Our corned beef pastries are baked. Now let's bring you in closer and show you what they look like. Now just look at these tasty little corned beef pastries. I can't wait to have one. And of course Raymond is over there. He's reaching out to have them. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what they taste like of course you probably already know and you can serve these with so many different sides I have it as an appetizer or a meal I got some uh, cram uh, some cucumber uh, dip there and those pickled peppers that we did and some uh, of our uh, oh my gosh our pickles there in mustard there you <laughs> I'll go, tell Ray. you what they taste like before you, you even you are to too funny and of course I got the rest of that corned beef fried up there for Raymond to have as mm -hmm. well. Anyway, good times here in our place today. <laughs> I'm going to have a little taste here now. Oh yeah, delicious. I say, I hope you're excited to make these delicious corned beef pastries. And again, I'm sure there's a lot of different types out there. I know making them in a pouch will probably be nice as well. And I mean, pastry in general, I can just have pastry every day so good i want to show you this adorable i'm going to say tea or older or cozy is what my sister said so this was a gift from my sister gertie and she put a great she does all of my embroidery for us here and i'm so excited for my my coats and everything so a big shout out to my sister yeah, gertie definitely. thank you thank you you've been a uh, 
uh, God sent to me and I'm going to pour out my hot cup of tea thanks to her and add a little taste of these pastries. Now you can serve these with some hot sauce and like I said, whatever dip you like or just on its own. Of course, Raymond is over there enjoying mm. these and I'm going to have a taste here now. Well, I just, uh, I'm just trying this one just like the air, mm. but I think I might try one with one of them pickles or something on it, you know? Oh my gosh. Drop the pastry delicious. Two thumbs up. The taste of the pastry is so flaky. And having that corned beef mixture in there, you can taste the onion going right through that sauteed. Yum, I can't wait for you to make it. I'm gonna have a sip of my tea. And Raymond is probably saying, two thumbs up on each side, well, or two pastries up. Oh yeah. my gosh, <laughs> so good. I was always told, don't talk with your mouth. Well, so. And that is a practice, mm. that's a rule. I had another little taste of my tea, Raymond. Mm. This is a simple, simple recipe. Canned corned beef. I know there's not a lot of people that likes canned corned beef, but the majority out there that do, we got a lot of recipes on Bonita's Kitchen that you could make from that little can. This one here is quick and easy if you want to have some appetizers before a meal or if you want to have it with a meal or for your meal with some fries or a nice tossed salad. It will be perfect. The recipe is going to be posted in under this video in the description section. It's either a more or an arrow pointing down. If you can't find it there, you can visit us on our website www.bonnetiskitchen.com And as well, I'm going to be sharing this recipe on our Facebook page along with a lot more recipes that we've done to date and up and coming recipes. And if you can't find a recipe there for this video, you can send me a message at bonnetakitchen at gmail.com. I'd love to send it to you. So this is it, as good as it gets, I would say, and I can't wait again for you to make them. I'm not gonna take any more of your time, we know it's precious. And on behalf of myself, Raymond, and our team, and from our kitchen to yours, thank you for joining us, and you have a wonderful day. If you're visiting Newfoundland and Labrador, don't forget to include the beautiful town of Portagrave in your travels and visit us again on Bonita's Kitchen. Join us by the sea. A journey in culinary. Always an open door. Bonita's Kitchen to yours. Bonita's Kitchen. Yours.